Let's say we're asked to prove that the quantity x plus y times x minus y is equal to x squared minus y squared. We can start by recognizing that this is really just talking about a sum and a difference equals a difference of squares. Difference because of the minus and squares because both these quantities are squared. Now please make sure you remember both of these phrases as this is bound to come up again and again and again throughout this course and future math courses you're going to take. The sum is representing the x plus y, the difference is representing the x minus y, and then the difference is, well, the minus, with the squares being the two powers. We can start by distributing just like we have in the past. The x will get multiplied by both x minus y, and then the y will get multiplied by both x minus y as well here. Now we can distribute the x into both of these terms. That will give us an x squared, x times x is x squared. x times negative y will give us a negative xy. y times x will give us a positive yx, whereas y times negative y will give us a negative y squared. These two at the tail ends or the flanks are being found by using the product property or the product rule of exponents. Now hopefully you remember from a previous video or a previous discussion that y times x is the same as x times y. So we can do that replacement or we can rewrite the expression as such. At this stage when we combine like terms, these two terms cancel each other out because one's a negative, the other is a positive leaving behind just x squared minus y squared, which is what we were trying to prove. We wanted to show that the product of these two expressions is always going to give a difference of squares. A few other things to note. This is one of the greatest shortcuts in all of mathematics. Anytime you're trying to multiply two quantities where the algebraic terms are the same. You have an x here and another x here, and a y here and another y here, but you have a sum and a difference. The answer to this problem will always be a difference of squares. All you have to do is square the first term minus square the second term. A couple of things to note. 3 times 5 is 15, but the same is true of 5 times 3 as well. This is known as the commutative property of multiplication. So sometimes you might see x plus y first and then x minus y, but the same formula is still true if I had written the x minus y first and then the x plus y precisely because of the commutative properties. So here we can see that x plus y and x minus y yield x squared minus y squared if we had swapped the location of these two terms, or the signs, we would still have a sum and a difference. And if we multiply the two of those things, we always get a difference of squares. Second thing to note is that x and y are just placeholders. You can put whatever you want before the plus sign and whatever you want after the plus sign. And as long as those two quantities are the same, you can apply this formula. Anything, in other words, can replace them. They, they could be replaced with 2a and 5b, and the formula would still apply. The way I would like for you to memorize this formula is actually in plain English, which is to say the first plus the second, this is our sum, times the first term minus the second term. So notice the first terms are the same here. These are not two separate first terms. They have to be identical. The same thing for the second terms. The second terms are the same. The only difference is there's a sum with the first expression and a difference with the second expression. And when we multiply these two, we always square the first term minus square the second term. 